Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 16. Now let us discuss ionization enthalpy. See, ionization means tendency to lose electron. When you say ionized a particular atom, that means one electron is kicked out. I have this atom there's some electron. So if you kick out one electron from this, I call this as ionized. So it is a quality measure to find the tendency of the element to lose electron. And actually it is nothing but energy. It is the energy required to remove one electron from an isolated gaseous atom in the ground state. I'll tell you why it is isolated because uh, if it is isolated, then only we can find the actual ionization energy. Because if it is not isolated, then there will be some other energy which is also required to be removed first or extra energy required to remove an electron. There can be some force of attractions or some something and lattice energy or something. To get the exact ionization energy, we assume that that particular element first is in gaseous state and it is isolated. So that we are discussing only about ionization enthalpy. We, we should not, so that we don't uh, take into consideration other energy like uh, the, the, elect, the attraction energy or this kind of stuff, right? So to make our calculation easy, we just assume isolated gas so that there is no other attraction, there is no other uh, energy which we have to overcome or attraction or force we have to overcome to take out the electron. So we just assume that this atom is in gaseous state and this is isolated. So we just go and pick out one electron. So if it is let's suppose in crystal form it is solid then to take out one electron first I have to remove the electron from the crystal and we will take out electrons. So different kind of energy is required so that makes things complex. Right? So, so to ease my life to make things easier I assume it is isolated gas atom and from that I take out one electron the ground. Correct. And first ionization energy for element X is the enthalpy change and it is depicted by this reaction. I have any uh, element in the gaseous form or isolated gaseous form in that I take out an electron, it gives a positive charge. Right? And since this is energy, it is represented in kilojoule per volt. Right? Similarly, we have the first ionization enthalpy is nothing but the energy required to remove first electron. We can also have second ionization enthalpy is nothing but energy required to remove second most loosely bond electron. Correct? So the first was the valence electron, you remove the first valence electron and the second ionization enthalpy is the energy required to remove second loosely bond electron. So I have already one ionized um, atom. From this I remove one more electron to get two positive charges. And please note, energy is always required to remove electron. So the enthalpy is always positive. Positive means energy is required. Please note, positive means energy is required. So in this case of ionization enthalpy, when you have to pluck out one electron from an atom, energy is always required. So it's always positive. Correct? And also note that second ionization enthalpy is higher than the first ionization enthalpy. Why? Because you need to put more energy to remove second electron generally than to remove first electron. Right. And ionization enthalpy and the atomic radius property are closely related. So as the, the atomic size increased, the ionization enthalpy and energy required is less because the, the outermost electron is loosely bound to the nucleus and you can easily pluck the electron but if the atomic size is less and this neutron has closely hold the electron it is difficult to remove the outermost electron right you see the trend in the ionization enthalpy so the trend is little uh, zigzag way you see that the maximum is the noble gas so if you see the ionization enthalpy the maximum is the noble gas why it is so because the noble gas are totally satisfied in the light right and they don't want anyone to come and remove one electron from them and make their life miserable because the moment one electron is removed from uh, noble gas it has to again go 
get one electron to attain the stability. So noble gas will not like to remove any electron. So that's why it is very hard to remove electron from this noble gas because noble gas will try its best to retain the electron. Correct? Because they are already stable. So they are maximum for the noble gas. Right? So to understand this uh, trend, we have to take here a lot of things. For example, the atomic size, the, you know, the stability of the atom, those kind of things. We'll discuss those things in the next few slides. Just understand that this is a zigzag way actually and uh, the maximum is peak occurs at the noble gases because they have stable configuration and don't want to lose electron. Right? And the minium occurs at the alkali metal. Example, sodium, lithium, potassium. Because why minimum? Because these guys have one extra electron. If they lose one electron, they can easily become stable. They easily want to lose electron. So the ionization energy is very low for them because they easily want to lose electron, right? And they are very highly reactive. These things we have learned in the class classes also. The noble gas, they are pretty noble. They are happy in their life. They want they don't want to lose electron. So it will be very difficult to take out an electron from them. These guys are ready to lose an electron, so it's easy to take out an electron from them, right? So across a period, if you go, for example, in this case, we are going across a period, cross period, and this guy is across the group, right? Or descend the group, this group, because we go down. So if you see across period, it is increasing actually, but you will see slight variation. We will discuss all these why uh, boron has lower uh, enthalpy than beryllium and oxygen has lower than nitrogen. We will discuss it, but general trend if you see it increases as we go across a period, right? And uh, if you go down a group, if you see, if you go down a group, this decrease, right? Because the atomic size increase. And if you see this pattern is similar to the atomic size, the atomic size increase and it is easy to lose electron. Here also if you see the atomic size decrease, right? If you go here, the atomic size decrease. Here if you come, atomic size increase. So atomic size is decreasing. So it is difficult to remove electron because the atomic size is less and the neutrons has more control over electrons. So it is as good as one in one family, the head is having more control over one electron or one person. So it is difficult or in a company you can say that the manager is having good control over one employee, his electron is employed. So it is very difficult for another company to, to take out an employee from the company. But if the company is big and uh, if the company is very big, there is some employee here, this management is not having a very strict control over of this employee and this is not able to control this employee, so this employee can easily go to some other company. You can, you can just correlate the element with the real life things, right? You can you assume this electron as employee and uh, this uh, neutron as the company. If they can attract very well this employee, it won't go. It will be very difficult for other companies to attract this employee. Right? But if uh, this uh, neutron is not having control, company is not having control over the employee, employee is not having the, con with the company, it's not attracted that much with this company, it can go off very easily. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.